Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for bringing the Indian. Tell me what you know about this. Uh, well, uh, I brought it in for a friend of mine, uh -huh. and it uh, came down through uh, a different family. It, it, it first, uh, the story goes that it was first in a, a grocery store in Springfield, Kentucky, uh -huh. called McCoy and Shades Grocery. Okay. And I guess maybe advertising tobacco. Okay. And then years later, uh, it was in the Majestic Theater okay. in Springfield. And, Springfield, uh, Kentucky. Springfield, Kentucky. Uh -huh. And um, and then uh, the Robertson family was, uh, through marriage, required it through the family. Uh, their grandfather or something, grandmother was married into that McCoy family or something. And yes. it came down through the Robertson family. Okay. And, that, and it was in the uh, circuit clerk's office for about 35 years. Bubba Robertson was a county clerk. Okay. And, Sat uh, in his office then. In his office. Yeah. And then after he retired, it, it uh, went to his residence. Okay. And now his son has it. So okay. So that's all I know about it. Okay. Basically. Well, you know, it's interesting, and, and I'm glad you brought it in. This is one of those objects where I might spend a little more time talking about what the object is and what we think it is versus kind of the history of cigar store carved Indians. Right. Right. Um, interesting, right? It would be if it were a, a period thing be scarce in this small size. Most were almost life size when they were carved and used, as you kind of indicated, uh, by vendors, by trade to draw customers, clients inside the doors, left outside for, for those initial years. Um, we looked at this. There were a number of other appraisers and I that kind of looked at this and spent some time. Um, and uh, to be honest, we're a little split on what it really is. I think at the end of the day, it's not as early as some of the earliest uh, mm -hmm. of these carved images. Mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't all Indians, right? right? They weren't all Indians, but um, it's not one of the earliest. But let's talk for a second about what we do see here. Painted surface, carved wood, right? Initially, we weren't kind of sure if it was wood or not. So it, it is wood? Uh, we believe that it is wood, yep, not all of it. The feathers up here are a tin, right? They're a painted okay. tin. Mm -hmm. The body is a carved wood. The base right here is this wrapped piece of, uh, it's a thin strip of lead that's wrapped around. Mm -hmm. And then it's a plaster that's poured underneath, mm -hmm. okay, on a wood base. Mm -hmm. All right. Top to bottom, there's a painted surface over all of it. I love the painted surface here on the base. It has a kind of a finish and a, and a, and a grizzled nature about the varnish today that you can't really uh, uh, fake, right? right? I'm going to use that word for a second. The rest of the paint here is three or four layers deep. How do we know it's wood if it's covered by paint? You have a couple age cracks here where we can get a loop, a magnifying glass, uh -huh. into the crack and we can kind of see into the wood grain. And we can see multiple layers of paint, so it has kind of a paint history. That's not unusual for these things, particularly if they were outside right. because the weather would have worn down the paint. This was probably not outside. The small size would have sat on a countertop on the inside. Right. Um, I don't, again, think by characteristic uh, or by some of the other things that we see about the paint that it is one of the earlier executions would have, which would have made it the late 19th century. Right. Right, somewhere between 1870 and 1890. I think what you probably have here is something that might have, might have been made in this area, but might be from the 30s to the 50s. Now, I know you told me a story about it being known since the 30s, but I think it's probably made right around the turn of the 20th century. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and it may have been outside for a little bit. Sure. The, the layers of the paint history are kind of hard to tell again because uh -huh. uh, they're, all, they're all built up. Um, what does your friend think about the, the value? Do they know? Well, uh, he had it uh, praised um, years ago. Okay. And uh, they probably would, should have started and told they me wouldn't that put part a up value front. on it. They wouldn't put a value on it. Didn't put a value on it. No. That's interesting. Did they say why they wouldn't put a value on it back then? Uh, they said they didn't have anything to compare it to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. If I'm trying to date the age of this, right, I like the fact that there are the tin feathers. That, to me, I think puts it in a certain time period, again, probably somewhere between 1930 and 1950. If I'm giving it a value, because I think that there are some questions about uh -huh. the origin and the age, I'm going to probably give it, a, a, admittedly, maybe a conservative value of something in the $1,500 to $2,500 range okay. Okay. Yep, for what I think it is, because there are some questions about, sure. about it. But right. it's... 
an amazing execution, yeah. right? Certainly in that style of these earlier Indians, right. and the small size is to its advantage. Thanks for bringing it in. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you.